Tom Friels, Professor of Automotive Technology at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. And we have a series of videos here to help explain and help instructors with teaching electric vehicle technology. And that has been provided thanks to an NSF grant that we were awarded uh, recently. And if you'd like to know more, take a look at our website at selfdrivesinclair.org. Okay, today we want to show you the mega ohm meter and how to basically use it. Also prove prove it's testing or prove it out so that you know that you can rely on it um, as far as testing high voltage. So this meter or this example of this type of meter is, is used for a couple things. If you're just using it as a voltmeter, perfectly fine, but what you want to do is make sure that the meter works and can tell you if there is high voltage present. So most of your power down procedures or high voltage checkout, however you want to describe it, involve you going to somewhere on the vehicle, uh, access to, high, to a high voltage component and making sure that it doesn't have any high voltage after you've disabled the car. And that's all well and good as long as you know that you can count on your meter. So we're, we're basically counting on our meter to tell us there's no voltage, but we, we're assuming we have a meter that actually works. So a, an old school of thought on that was, I'll go to a 12 volt battery and then I can make sure that I have a meter that's able to tell me of, you know, what I would expect to see out of a 12 volt battery. And that's fine on a low voltage scale, but that doesn't necessarily say it's capable of a high voltage scale. So there is a proving unit that's capable of doing that. This, uh, this basically will provide 240 volts AC or DC, that's selectable over here, since I'm usually doing something on a uh, high voltage component that's on the DC side, that's usually all I'm concerned with. So this isn't uh, particularly just used for anything EV. This is obviously something that they're going to use in the electrical industry as well. So basically what you're wanting to do is put your voltmeter on your DC scale. Um, I have my leads in the typical spot. I've got category 3 meter, 1000 volt rating. I've got leads that are uh, category 3 and any of my accessories are category three, including I'm going to end up using these here in a minute. The other thing to point out is these are shipped with these small little covers. Um, uh, with my experience in the classroom over the years, these get mistaken for like covers and then they get basically tossed in the box and then they kind of fall out of the box and they just tend to disappear. Those are actually supposed to be on there if you're using this as a category three meter. The idea is this only gives you so much contact area to touch a high voltage component. So I wouldn't get leads that are able to touch two things at once. So that's, those are actually part of the rating of a class three um, accessory. There are some other leads that are already completely coated all the way, or they might have a Kind of a contraption that'll spin and move out of the way. I have those as well, but I, I wanted to hook these up. So all I have to do basically when I use my proving unit to show my voltage, uh, which by the way, since this is capable of 240 volts, then I should have my protective gloves on, which I tested earlier off camera. And same with those of the prior video, we've, we've got our uh, 1000 volt rated gloves within uh, the date make sure that they're um, compliant and basically I'm going to use these two terminals and it's kind of like a little uh, momentary switch. I have to push down and you'll see that I've got there's 243 volts DC okay and that's just coming from this little box that's magically doing that off of I believe it's four double A's so it's able to actually boost that up to give you that type of test. So now I know my leads are basically um, working, my meter is capable of reading a high voltage, so I've proven my meter works. So we use the, we kind of use the phrase live dead live, so we just did the live part, then you would go to the vehicle or whatever component you're going to, making sure it's dead or zero volts or whatever the spec is, it's usually below so many volts. And then you go back and use the proving unit again, which would be the, the last live of the live dead live test. 
and that says that something didn't happen to my meter along the way and I know about it now so I prepared for the next time. Kind of like testing your gloves before you use them and then testing them when you're done so they're not just thrown in your toolbox and you get the surprise later that something happened. So I am going to switch these out so something a little bit easier to work with and these alligator clips are also class 3 thousand volt rated. All right before we use our meter we want to make sure that our mega meter actually works uh, and there's not a blown fuse. So a good way to do that and kind of prove out that the meter is functioning, we're going to do we're going to do a test with it basically with an open circuit. So with the leads open, now you can see that I have that's what your the highest part of the scale is for the 500 volt scale, which in this case is 550 mega ohms. The smaller number that you see on the lower right is basically the voltage that the meter was providing, so 526 volts. Uh, then on the completely flip side, we're going to put our leads together and show what it should show if the leads are shorted together. So I should see the lowest side of the scale, which in this case I do. All right. Now when I go to a component, in this case I've got an MG2 motor from a, an older Prius, a second gen Prius. I'm going from one of the um, windings to the case and we're basically going to test this windings, any connection that it would have to ground, which basically tells us what we're actually doing is, it's called an insulation test. You're testing the insulation of that winding. And the reason for that would be, and using a, a motor as an example, this winding can fatigue over time, lots of miles and things like that. If there's Fatigue in that winding, it could be providing a path of high voltage outside to the case. It could provide it to another leg of my three phases, whatever the case may be. But that would come up as a fault in the system as might be called a loss of isolation or what some manufacturers call a high voltage leak. And the test for that is basically using this meter for such a thing. So we'll run this test. I'm going to hold that button. It shows the high side of my scale, which means this is way on the absolute highest side of the scale for this test, and it shows the voltage provided of 526. All right, a couple things. I like to use the clamps because the clamps I can leave on. One of the things, if you use regular leads, you want to always remember to use the test button let go of the test before you disconnect from the component you're testing. The reason for that is, one, that might be where if you don't have gloves on, you get to feel that 500 volts, which I wouldn't recommend. The other thing is, is any other type of component could have some capacitance to it. If I put 500 volts of, of it into that and it has capacitance, and I don't let the meter discharge itself, discharge what it just charged up, then that could be sitting there waiting for the next person to touch it, and it will actually be charged up. Now, it usually wouldn't happen on something like a motor winding because it's such a low resistance, but another component like a, a module that has contactors in it or anything like that um, actually can store that 500 that we put in it if we don't let the meter actually let that dissipate. So when that test is happening, we'll do it again. Since I have basically no path with that high resistance, that number didn't come, you didn't, that number basically just went away. That's an indication that there is now no longer any voltage sitting here, so I'm okay to disconnect and it's not going to be a danger to anybody else. I've got a motor winding here out of a second gen Prius, so it would be referred to as MG1. And this is something uh, just because it's easy to do on the bench and use for a demo, uh, we're going to do a mega mega meter meter test basically on this component. So, on, in practical purposes, this would be on the vehicle. You would go to a main harness or something going to the transaxle, and find your three main uh, cables to the motor winding. I'm just using a motor's example because it's something that's a small component, easy to do. I could very well do the same test on this cable from from basically one of the ends to where it mounts to the case. 
Uh, I usually have a bunch of these around and then I might bug one. I can show you that eventually here. I can bug one so it won't pass, all right? Just to have a, a, an activity or something for, for a class. So to do a mega test, I gotta do a couple things on the meter. I need to switch my leads over to the other side of the panel and you will basically see insulation here in orange. This is also called an insulation test. So what, what's going on here is this meter is going to be basically put into the, the insulation test mode all the way around the dial and the default is to the 500 volt scale. This meter is basically going to provide 500 volts. It's going, I'm basically putting it into, in this case, this one part of a three phase winding. I put my ground probe basically on the case because that would be bolted to the case of the transaxle, which therefore would be bolted to the um, chassis of the vehicle. So by providing that voltage, what I'm trying to determine is, is there a path from my winding to ground or to the chassis in this case? So I have a test button here. There also is another probe that sometimes is handy where the test button can be used and you can use a, this button basically represents the same thing that this test button does, which is fine. It's just depending on where you're at on the vehicle it might be a little more um, easier to work with. I like doing this when I have a component because I'm, I'm not actually touching the component. I'm ready to go. I'm going to do an insulation test. And basically I have failed that test on this winding. So, um, I can move on to other windings, see if I still have the same problem. Looks like my back light went out, sorry. Yep, still failing. Still failing. All right, so that basically means that I was putting this meter's voltage potential into the winding, and since I am connected to its ground, there has been a path that has been established back to ground. I saw basically that reading that you see there because it does not have a high resistance. In fact, it's probably a very low resistance because what I basically have for you here is an example of a motor winding that has a loss of isolation type of fault, meaning I've got pretty much a direct short to ground, if you want to call it that. Um, to pull back the cover, this is bugged on purpose just so I have something that'll fail in a lab activity and then I could have other motor windings that won't fail. Thanks for watching our video. If you'd like to find out some more, check out our website at selfdrivesinclair.org and also check out below for more resources regarding parts, equipment, and uh, teaching methods.